Hey everyone, it's Heather Hope again. Welcome back to another episode of the Inspired Entrepreneur Podcast. Okay, if you're new here, welcome. If you have been an avid listener, I appreciate you so much. So my name is Heather Hope. I am a law of attraction teacher, speecher, speecher, <laughs> teacher, speecher, speaker, and writer. And I wrote a book called The Inspired Entrepreneur. It's 366 days of inspiration for entrepreneurs. So it's basically helping entrepreneurs, business owners, um, self-employed people be inspired every day and with with the help of the law of attraction. Okay, so today is day day October. Goodness, it's a little early for me actually. I usually record these somewhere between 4 and 6 p.m. And today it's right before noon. I have to go for a, a bunch of errands down far from my house. So I thought, let's do this first so then I can get back. Okay, so today is October 23rd, 2020. So let's jump into it. Each This is a daily podcast, if you don't know. And um, just reading the passage for the day and then talking a little bit about it. That's all it is. So I hope you're doing great. Um, and let's let's get started. Okay, so October 23rd, today's message is you need to stop doubting. Get strong with your thoughts. When you wobble, you lose your connection with the power of your energy. Okay, so you need to stop doubting. So what is doubting? Like you're doubting, you're doubting. Okay, so I think <laughs> when we were growing up, some of us, a lot of us, I think, grew up without this connection, like we lose a connection with source and we feel like everything's on, on ourselves, like on us. And if we don't get it right, then it's going to be wrong. And all of this doubt, like, am I smart enough? Am I capable and all that? And when you dive into Abraham's work, you realize that for one thing, which is super important and, and helpful is this is when, if, it, if a doubt pops in my head, whether or not I can do something, I remind myself of what I learned from Abraham. And that is, if I had the thought, it can be accomplished. And it's not on, it's not totally on me. It's not me, human Heather, to make everything perfect and that everything's my responsibility. The universe has so much going on and making things line up and things line up. <laughs> so it's not on me. It's like, I know that the other thing is that I know that as long as I don't worry and stress about something, I will have connection with source, infinite intelligence, and I can go through the process of whatever it is with the knowing the knowing, like I don't lose my connection. I've learned to do this. And this is what the next statement is. Get strong with your thoughts. Get strong with your thoughts. You got to stop worrying. You got to stop doubting because you lose the connection to source. Source is everything. It tells you everything. It makes you super intelligent on any topic you want to be intelligent on. If you stop saying, oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm so dumb and I just don't know and I get nervous and I don't know if I can do it. I've never been good in school and I have a hard time studying and I, all the bullshit that most people, I hear it all the time, it, you know, frankly, it gets really tiring to hear <laughs> because it's like, you got to get a strong mindset. You got to get strong with yourself. You have to move forward and know that source you have this direct connection you are part of infinite intelligence all you have to do is just keep moving forward and not disconnect not you know disallow this energy this knowing this intelligence you are super insanely intelligent if you keep your connection with source 
if you keep yourself in a good mood, if you keep yourself in a positive, with a positive outlet, outlet, outlook, if you keep yourself going downstream, feeling good, not freaking out over every little thing. <laughs> I know people who are like that. My best friend freaks out about every freaking thing. I spent some time with her. She, she um, watched her, watched my dog because my dog loves her while we were in Mexico and she was here. Um, she stayed with us for like two nights before we left and she was here for two or three nights after we came back. She was waiting for her ride and she was driving. I've known her for 25 years. We've had an, you know, an incredible relationship and she was driving me crazy. Like I, you know, it's, it's like, I, I have been, you know, very calm, I'm a very different person than what she's used to in the past because I've changed a lot drastically. Like I don't sit around and vent all day long. I don't sit around and, and complain and all that stuff like I used to. And now, you know, listening to her in the way that she freaks out, she's just one of those people who is super over dramatic in a freaked out way. <laughs> Do you know somebody like that? Let me know. But it's like, after a while, it's like, and I tell her because, you know, I can be really blunt with her for the most part, right? And I'm like, there's a couple times I told her to stop it <laughs> because, you know, being in my house, it's kind of like you want, you know, you want your surroundings. Like I'm very in my bubble and it's no stress in my house and it's calm and, and quiet and not dramatic. Like my, I'm not dramatic. I, I can be just for for fun be dramatic about things but not like freaked out dramatic um and my husband's certainly not dramatic at all so so it's like such a different dynamic but anyway that type of personality just makes for a very rocky difficult life that's all it is when you freak out about everything when you worry about everything that's when you introduce all of that resistance and that's why a lot of people live rocky lives that's the only, that's like the only reason it's because they, they allow their habits of thinking, habits of responding, reacting, continue because they don't really realize at all that what they're doing is that they're creating their, their world. So let's get back to the message. You need to stop doubting. I know it's like, you just need to stop doing it. How do you do that, Heather? Like I work with my clients all the time with the, this, this stuff about like, how do you just stop doing it? It's a, it's a deep, you know, habit. It's a thing. It's a, it's a belief and all this stuff. And I'm like, you, okay. So the work is to stop that, like interrupt it. As soon as you start noticing it, like you have to be more aware of what you're thinking. And as soon as you realize that you're thinking a certain thought, that you know that if you go down that rabbit hole, it's not going to be fun, that you got to stop and be like, no, what do I want? I don't want to do that anymore. It's so freaking tiring. It creates so much drama in my life. You know what I mean? So you got to get strong with your thoughts. So you replace them. You interrupt it. You pivot. You interrupt your thought that you know that if you think that thought and continue thinking that thought, it's going to go downhill. So you have to interrupt it in that moment. You know, I'll be aware of it, interrupt it, pivot. Where do I want? What do I want to think? What do I want to create in my life? Well, since I don't want to create drama anymore because it's tiring. I want to create something good today. I want to have fun. I want to think good thoughts. I want to feel good. So then that's what you want. You pivot. You're like, okay, so what, what can I do? What can I focus on? What, how can I pivot this thought to something else? Well, you can totally change the subject. I've done that a million times, changing the subject, reminding myself, nope, don't go there. Go over here choosing a different path with my thoughts. And that's all it is. That's the work. That's the work. That's the work. That's the work. The work is to be aware of those thoughts before they get out of hand and build momentum. Choose different thoughts that will go down a path that's going to be good. 
when you lose, when it, when you wobble, you lose your connection with the power of your energy. So wobbling is that whole, um, instability. When you think of something wobbling, it's like, it's not stable, right? When you think of, so when you think of something that's stable, you think of it, it's not moving. It stays right there. And when you think of something that wobbles, it's wobbling, it's moving around. It doesn't have its sure footing. So that wobbling emotionally is the thinking all these thoughts, the doubting, the, the worry, the anxiety, the self-doubt, the self-worth issues, all that stuff. That's the wobble. That's the wobble. And so when you're wobbling, when you're feeling those or feeling those feelings and thinking those thoughts, you lose your connection with the power that your energy gives. Like you're putting your energy into something that will create more of that. Whatever you put your focus on, you create more of, right? So you have to be more stable. Think of yourself. Now, this is like a big deal um, with people, say, say people who've been diagnosed, officially diagnosed with bipolar disorder. I used to work with them. My parents are both bipolar. Well, they, they, Gosh, you know, I hate putting labels on anything anymore. I'm so anti-label. Like I have two labels, I think. I have three labels in my life. I'm female, I'm a Yorkie mom, and I'm a wife. <laughs> That's about it at this point. Other than like a job title or something. You know what I mean? Like I just don't like labels because it really pigeonholes people into something that doesn't, you know, need to be. Just whatever. So, um diagnosed with bipolar and it's just that balance of energy now I know some people might take that of like well it's very severe it is it can be very severe but the thing is there's a lot of things that are not wrong with that there's a lot of things I worked for 15 years with bipolar patients and I saw firsthand and what I learned like from from being in school I learned all of the abnormal stuff, right? Now I learned what that psychology feels is abnormal. Abraham is like, it's not abnormal. That's just being human. And sometimes we allow, we let our energy get so extreme. We don't rein ourselves in a little bit. You know what I mean? And is that momentum? <laughs> so, and then the other way, going to the depression side not, you know, allowing ourselves to go down that road with the negative thinking that creates momentum, that creates this pit of despair, where you're a 22 on the guidance scale. It's just that balance. It's like bringing yourself back into alignment, which is stable with that stability right in the middle of being manic or depressed, right? It's not allowing the thoughts to go too far out that creates the drama of stuff, like being too far depressed or too far manic. Does that make sense? So it's all about keeping a balance of your energy, your thoughts, your emotions, just keeping a balance. When you've realized that it's going too far in one direction and it's creating instability, you got to rein it back in. You got to meditate. You got to breathe. You got to, you know, you got to take a walk. You got to really just sit and breathe and bring those thoughts back into, okay, let's calm down. Let's just calm and feel at peace and feel good. You know what I mean? I used to do that when I, when I used to get like stage fright or before seeing a new client or whatever in the past, or doing a presentation. Um, I used to do a lot of training. I used to do a lot of, um, presentations in the past and I would sit and breathe and say three words and they were, I am calm. I am calm. I am calm. 
and I would do that and I would instantly feel calm. I would feel like zoned out, like zened out. <laughs> That's what I would do before I would do anything. When I felt nervous, I brought myself back into alignment. And and it works. Whatever you you direct it and it happens. Whereas a lot of people will be like, I'm so nervous. That's just who I am. Blah, 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 blah. I was just listening to a video of an interview of this one woman, very successful in what she does. And she says, I'm still, I'm still really nervous when I approach a new prospect. A new, like every single time she says, now I'm listening to this mindset. Like she's very successful because she's good at her job. It's a particular type of um, job and very successful, you know, very. And she's like, as she said, I still get very nervous, very anxious before I speak to any new prospect. It's just who I am that, you know, and I'm listening to this, like, if you would stop, I, you know, attaching your, that to your identity you could flip that around, look at all the success you've had, look how easy it was because you already said in the interview that it ended up being super easy with what you were doing. It worked. It's very successful. And all of this, all the positives that you just said in this entire interview, if you would look at that and ease yourself each time, getting, getting out ahead of it each time, she would be even more successful in life because she attached her identity to who she really is, who is, who's confident, sure of herself, really good at her job. All of those things where she could walk in with, to a new prospect and completely with ease sell herself. That's it. Instead of attaching to that identity. And so it is, right? So it's just the work. That's all it is. Okay, guys. So I have to run because I am going to do, <laughs> I have to go do some errands. Oh, the, the, the nice thing about living in a small town, if you want certain things, you have to drive 60 miles one way to go get it. And so it's like I've been compiling a list of things that I need. And they're like so much cheaper down in Phoenix than they are where I live. So I'm like, oh, I'll just group it all today and go take a drive. And I have to do it like today because my ink ran out and I have to print like tons of papers. And I was in the middle of it. And I'm like, okay, I guess today is the day to go run my errands. And um, so, yeah, I get to go do that. But I have to be back because I don't like driving at night, not in the desert. So that's that's where we are today. Um, there was something else I wanted to mention before I left. What was it? Um, oh yeah. Like we're, I, we're moving. <laughs> we decided, you know, life can change very quickly. I've been writing about this. Um, maybe I've mentioned a tiny little bit this week on, you know, whatever topics have been coming up in these, in these daily messages. But um, when you, so this is a whole lesson. I could write a whole book just on this, this lesson that I've learned this week. Um, you, you line yourself up to what you want, the aspects of what you want, the aspects. The universe will bring it to you, will show your attention to it, will, you will attract it, it will come to you. The thing is you have to be very open-minded with it. And not just immediately shoo it off because it's like not what you think the path that you're creating is. Does that make sense? This is a huge lesson and your life would change very quickly in a direction that you really want, that you've been asking for, if you follow what feels exciting and let go of the things that don't feel exciting. Do that. And your life can pivot so dramatically, so quickly. And like I said, I think I said it yesterday that it feels like a quantum shift almost. Like it feels like, oh my God, complete 180. And it's taking you directly to what you wanted. 
You just thought it, you just thought it looked like something else. And I think most people don't look at it and they're like, no, no, I'm on this path and I'm going to make it work, even though it's killing me, even though I don't like it, even though blah, 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 because I've put so much time and effort into it, I'm just going to keep on this path. Even though the other path is like, holy crap, that that's everything I want. But I, I can't give this up. Society has told me not to give up, to keep pers- you know pursuing it you know, have that perseverance. I can't quit, blah, blah, blah. I can't fail all that mindset. And it's like, if you just let that go and go the other, you know, and try the other direction for a minute, you're going to say, Oh my God, this is so much easier. Oh my God. It has all the aspects that I truly love. And it's so much easier. So whole, that's a whole book right there. It's in, I hope I, I hope I get to write it. I hope I have enough time to write it because it's, and, and I'm going to see, where my life takes me, but follow the path of most excitement. I got that from Bashar. I really think um, this past month of digging into Bashar has really changed my life even more drastically of putting pieces together, you know, taking what I've learned from Abraham and then having Bashar come in on the scene and show me a little bit more. And it made some things connect a lot more. So follow the source, follow what source is telling you, follow the teachers of source only. Of course, that's my perspective, but I think it's the best advice ever is get, get, get your guidance from source. So, okay, guys, I got to go. Have an amazing rest of your day and I will talk to you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. Welcome back to the Inspired Entrepreneur with Heather Hope. 